All right, this is Jason with the Primal Outdoors channel, and today we're gonna to start the first video in a series of videos that I'm gonna start doing on Tuesdays that will be a question and answer video. So I'll be pulling questions that I get out of my comments and picking one and answering it, and uh, we will post those on Tuesdays. Now, today is gonna to be the first one, and we're gonna talk about why I feed my dogs raw meat. All right, so before we get too far into this, what I'd like to do is give you guys a little bit of a backstory. So before I had Daisy and Wheeler, and back when I was married, uh, we had two dogs, another golden retriever named Baron, and another dog, uh, Rex, who was a Burmese mountain dog, and we think uh, Akita, but we don't really know for sure because we only knew who the female was. But we had these two dogs, and Baron, who was the golden retriever, ended up developing cancer at five years old and had to be put down. And that was very frustrating and devastating to me. Uh, he was a really great dog and, and I still really miss him. He was a good, really good dog. And then Rex, uh, only slightly older than him, uh, had to be put down because of lupus. We, he had gotten lupus in it. And if you've ever had a dog that's gotten lupus, it's a pretty pretty rough thing to see you know he just got achy got sores all over his body uh, and just just went downhill and it was pretty tough to see now and at this time we had been feeding these dogs uh dry dog food uh and but good dry dog food i'm not gonna mention any names of the dog foods that we use but uh you know they were high quality made out of natural ingredients and supposedly uh, you know, grain and corn free dry dog foods. <clears throat> but then we got Daisy and Wheeler and it was pretty quick. Uh, it was pretty quick that I was seeing things weren't well with them as well. Uh, by the time they were a year old, both of them were so overweight uh, that they wouldn't even run. Uh, they would just kind of waddle and they were lethargic and we kept trying to cut back their feeds and everything. And it got to the point where I, I was like, this is ridiculous. Daisy was eating less than a cup of food a day and still not losing weight. And again, like I said, we're feeding very high quality, very expensive, uh, grain-free, dry dog foods. So <clears throat> I started doing some research and eventually kind of found some information on the internet about the raw diet, about feeding raw meat to the dogs. It made perfect sense to me after I kind of read it and we, and we, we put the dogs on it. And very quickly, uh, we saw a huge difference in the dogs. Uh, for one, it, there was a bit of a detox period. I'd say for the, uh, it took about six months for the dogs to you know, fully settle out, but they went from being extremely overweight to actually being probably a little bit underweight. Uh, they, it was crazy and it happened very quickly. Um, but after about six months of feeding them on the raw diet, then they settled out and their weights looked good. And another thing that I really noticed uh, was <clears throat> when they were on the dry dog food, they always had loose stool, uh, diarrhea or loose stool. Once they got them on the raw diet and they really got settled out, their stool uh, looked much more natural and if you've ever been out and seen coyote, uh, old coyote, uh, or any type of old uh, feral type dog or wild type dog's uh, stool, you notice that it's white, it's calcifies, it blows, you know, you if you kind of kick it around, it just crumbles and blows away in the wind. That's the way the dog stool is now. Uh, it looks very natural uh, when at the time that they're doing it. Uh, but then it just calcifies and blows away. So that's a, actually kind of an added bonus for the yard because I never have to go out and clean up after them because it doesn't just turn into this lump of unbiodegradable crud that just sits there forever. So anyways, that's a benefit. But like I said, the biggest benefits that I see is, you know, their weight is good. Uh, they're getting, uh, you know, they get, they get, eat a fair amount of food during the day uh you know not like a lot but like i said daisy was on less than a half or less than a cup and that just didn't seem fair for her but they get the decent amount of food 
their energy level is fantastic. They're, you know, we put them on this diet when they were probably a year and a half, uh, and they're both 11 now, and they both still uh, have very good energy. They don't have any weird allergies or skin problems. Uh, you know, golden retrievers are very known uh, for having bad hips. Daisy, maybe I just got lucky with her, but she, you know, 11 years old, still uh, very energetic. She'll still chase a rabbit if she sees one. You know, Wheeler, same thing. You know, both of them just seem to be really in good health, and I'm just very pleased with it. Now let's talk a little bit about what I feed the dogs. So on these trips, you guys typically see me feed them chicken just because it's easy to transport. Uh, so I, that's pretty much what I, what I bring for them. And so what I do is I buy 10 pound bags of chicken quarters and then I cut those chicken quarters in half and at a feeding, they each get one of those halves. Now when I'm at home, it's a little bit different. I have the chicken quarters, but I also get a ground meat from Cinder Butte Meat Market in Redmond, Oregon. And it's uh, uh, something that they grind out specifically for dog food. And it has various things in it. It has heart, lungs, liver, uh, other awful meats, uh, ground up bone meal, uh, and a few other things they've mentioned to me, but I don't quite remember everything, but it's all natural. Just, you know, when they're butchering and stuff like that, they take all that stuff and grind it up and put it into one pound packages for dog food. So I feed, I, I get those one pound packages. I cut those in half and each one of the dogs gets one of those in the evening. So in the mornings, you typical a typical day feeding would be in the mornings, I give them each a piece of chicken uh, and also a raw egg. And then in the evening, I give them uh, each a half of that uh, dog food, ground dog food that I get from the that I get from the f uh, meat store. So now, as far as the chicken, a lot of people have questions about that because we've all been told that chicken bones can lodge in the dog's throat and kill the dogs and stuff like that. And that is very true uh, when it comes to cooked chicken bones. You never want to feed, and I feel like this way about any type of bone. Uh, I don't like to feed my dogs any type of cooked bone to where it is hard and brittle. Uh, that I feel like is very unsafe. But when they are raw, they're very pliable. And by feeding the chicken bones, uh, their teeth stay super clean. They're, you know, they're, they've got something hard that they're chewing on and breaking up and, and their teeth stay super clean. So, uh, but again, like I said, don't, don't feed the chicken bones to them. Uh, cooked it's they need to be raw and another thing just as a disclaimer you know there's always murphy's law and in and i'm very extremely happy with the way that my dogs have come along on this diet and everything but of course if you look into this or maybe decide that this is something you want to do for your own dogs you do this at your own at your own discretion you know you're not doing this just because i i say it's great i've had very good luck with it and i've been extremely happy all with with the health of my dogs and uh so i'm going to continue with it and and quite honestly i don't think i'll ever feed a dog any other way but anyways i hope this answers a lot of the questions that you guys have when you guys see me feeding the dogs uh raw meat and of course i give them other snacks and stuff too uh, a lot of times when we're camping you guys see me feed them chunks of bacon or sausage or you know, uh, pieces of, uh, you know, summer sausage or whatever I'm, whatever I'm eating. I, I usually give them treats when we're out camping, but for the most part, uh, what I, you know, explained earlier is, as, is their normal feeding schedule. But anyhow, I hope that you guys found that helpful. And if you did, please give it a like. If you have any other questions, please leave those down in the comments and I'll see you guys again outside.